Yeah, you know, it's like the art blocks, everyone worries about them. Like, it's, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think you need to worry about, like, um, oh, I've stopped learning, I've stopped growing. Most of the people who are worried about that are, like, right in the middle of, like, doing a ton of learning and growing. The people who are justifiably freaked out about it are like the people who are in their 30s who are working professionals who feel like they haven't learned anything in the last 10 years. And like they look back over work from like 10, 15 years ago and they're like, this is not worse than what I'm doing today. <laughs> um, but like for most people who are actively learning in the process of like building their skills for the first time, uh, you just, you can just chill and just keep going and like you're almost certainly going to be all right yeah i mean I, i'm describing it because it's like a super common situation like it, it's like um i've had a few different kind of mental tricks over the years to sort of like try to trick myself around the um, kind of standard narratives that crop up like whenever I'd have an art block and I'd really struggle to get a drawing going, I had this idea that like there was this god, it's like sort of deity that would swoop in, or like a malicious deity would swoop in and um, kidnap my ability to make art and that it was demanding a certain number of bad drawings in order to be satisfied and then swoop away back into the cosmos. But like the god of bad drawings required its tithe and then if I would paint it, it would just leave. <laughs> and rather than bemoan it, I would just be like, well, okay, it's time to pay the bad art god. It's fine. Like, he's an asshole, but he'll go away if I just give him what he wants. And so I just don't bother, like, getting too fussed about it. it keeps me from freaking out. The god of bad drawings would be a fun thing. I, I really should do an illustration of him because there's... You know, it's really easy sometimes to put these kinds of um, supernatural sort of art experiences, like the muse or, you know, the god of bad drawings, as like um, to to think about them in more practical terms. I, I keep thinking that I should do illustrations of these kinds of things. Actually, there's a character I have drawn a couple of times that I think of as like what the personification of my own muse looks like. His name's Cabbage Head. I have an acrylic painting of Cabbage Head in my office that I that I treasure. I've refused to sell it a couple of times and like because I was thinking, you know, it's the best acrylic like painting I've done. And um So I wanna keep around this thing that is like this, you know, this sign it's like I feel like it's this little totem, this little blessing from like my muse. You know, just letting me make a cool little painting and like it's intended to be of, you know, the, the muse. I don't really think about it in that terms most of the time, but it's fun to indulge in these little fantasies. Yeah, God of Bad Drawings is it's a fun concept and it's like everyone deals with that feeling and so it's like it's a useful thought technology. I wonder if there are other kinds of deities that can be personified to kind of explain the internal sensations we experience in an effort to try to like, you know, externalize these things instead of laying them so hard on ourselves. The trouble often is that we like, we, we get wrapped up in the feeling. And, and so like we let it kind of take over and it, it can feel really, really overwhelming at times. So I think um, externalizing these feelings can help a lot turning them into gods and things. I mean, that's kind of the whole Angelarium project is uh, externalizing internal, you know, feelings and ideas and stuff. So doing it in a way that like correlates back to education is probably a good idea for me to do at some point. Some, you know, it's a, the median point between my two big projects right now. And the, the thing about the God of Bad Drawings also is this is an original idea of mine I didn't actually steal from some self-help book or something. So uh, I, I can own this as a piece of advice like thoroughly and like, you know, feel like uh, I get to take credit for it, which most of the advice I have in the world, I've borrowed from some other smart source. It's one of the very few Pete Morbacher originals. Maybe it'll enter the canon someday.